This video is sponsored by Display Land. Today we're going to go through the resources I used to massively speed up putting my scenes together. I put this scene together and rendered it in about two days. A lot of Blender artists are looking to make short films or short animations on their own and they don't have a team and kit bashing is the way to produce environments quickly so that you can produce content on your own. Kit bashing just really means mashing together a bunch of assets and I find that a lot of beginners feel really guilty using other assets, but this is commonplace in professional environments with game studios, visual effects houses, architectural renderings, a lot of those things are using various assets and kind of mashing them together. And we're gonna talk about some of the resources I use to find some of those assets. And then we're also going to talk about how you can take those assets and accommodate them to your style, use them in your scene, and some tips I have on keeping your animation in your style with your characters while also kind of speeding up how you put together a piece. First up, let's talk about BlendSwap. Now this is a resource I used to use all the time and they do have some paid options, but for the most part, pretty much everything on here is free. And this is a much smaller pool than some of the other resources that are on here. But I wanted to include this one because it is specifically Blender. And because it is specifically Blender, a lot of these are actually kind of shared with easy to like no credit attribution because a lot of people in the Blender community give things out for open source thanks to, you know, Blender itself being open source. There's quite a bit on here, including rigs and materials. And mostly it's made up of models that you can download. And you can see just a couple here from the most downloaded section that a lot of these are useful. For example, this low poly foliage would be great for filling out the back background. Now this is a cool resource. This is called deepart.io and you may be wondering why I'm showing you this because what it does is it converts your images into painting effects and you may be wondering how that's useful in 3D. Well, let's say that you're going for a stylized look. Let's say that you're going for a painterly look and you can only find a photoreal asset. Assets like deepart.io or resources are really great for kind of converting the texture files into a painterly look so that you can convert these photoreal environments or photoreal textures that you may have downloaded from CC0 textures and kind of convert it into more of a painterly feeling, which may help you get that more stylized look you want to achieve. Next up, let's talk about CG Trader. Now, CG Trader has a lot of paid models, though I find that they are cheaper than most other websites, and I find myself using CG Trader the most due to the good pricing. But whenever you search, you can actually come up here and you can click this little free button here, and then it will display a lot of free results here. Now, CG Trader has a huge catalog. You just need to be aware of the objects here and what formats they come in. And then when you click them, you need to make sure that you pay attention to the license, though almost everything on here is royalty free, even when it is a free model. Sketchfab is an awesome resource for more stylized objects. Now there is a variety of objects on here, but I found that this has one of the larger selections when you're looking for stylized assets and models. Now it's a bit pricier than CG Trader, but if you're looking for a specific stylized look, you can usually find it here. And a lot of times they have great little stylized asset packs like these trees, flowers, and rocks, for example. So go ahead and take a look here if you're looking for more painterly objects. This is a perfect opportunity to talk about the sponsor of the video, Display Land, which is a great way to get more assets for free to put into your scenes. Now, Display Land is a free photo scanning app, and it allows you to scan objects in the real world with just your phone in this app. You do have to have AR core on your phone, but most new modern phones like the Google Android Pixel, Samsung, and iPhone are equipped with AR core. There are some limitations because it's a mobile app, but it is a very strong piece of software and I'm very impressed with the results I was able to get. I've used it in previous tutorials to build out environments in the background which were being pushed out of focus and I've used it to add assets into some of my scenes. You can see here I made this little horse skull in the background here. Look in the description below for a link to the app and also a tutorial I made for Displayland on how to use the app itself and some tips and tricks to get good scans. Next up, I wanna talk about Pexels, which is one of my favorite resources. Now this is mostly for photography, though they do have some video, and you may be wondering why I'm showing you kind of photography for a 3D asset tutorial. But what I wanna show is that there are plenty of textures on here. So if I just come up here and type in texture, you can see that there are a lot of textures to here. Now for the most part, every image on this site is royalty free, though you can double click the license to get more information. Another thing I've used this site for is background. So if I type in here forest, 
I can get a forest background. And a lot of times, if you're close up on an object, you can actually just push the background out of focus and use that as your background. I've done that for some of my renders, such as this one. If you're looking for easier ways to light your scenes and to speed up how you have your lighting setups, HDR Haven has a great number of HDRIs to use in your scenes. Now, not all free HDRIs are good because they don't have a wide enough dynamic range to truly light your scene accurately. However, HDRI Haven has a lot of great resources and these images are well produced and put together so that you can get accurate lighting with these. And it's a great way to save time on lighting your scenes. Polygon has saved me a ton of times on projects with their various textures and other options, but they also have now a model section, an HDR section, and a brush section. Now you have to pay a subscription and then you get credits and then you get access to these objects that way, but they also have this free section for models, textures, and all that. And they usually have quite a bit of free textures on here as well, and they rotate out their free selections. So if you keep an eye here, you can usually get various free selections as you go. CC Zero Textures is a texture site where you can get PBR textures and they've recently started including models and Photoscan models, although they're not as common currently. It's cool that they're adding them. Everything on here is called CC Zero because you don't have to give any attribution. Now, of course, whenever you deal with free assets, you have to worry about the quality, but I wouldn't recommend this if I didn't stand by it. A lot of the PBR textures on here are top-notch quality and they're going to be as good as most of the paid assets you have. Of course, whenever you're working with a free website, you may not be able to find as many assets as you're looking for, but for the most part, they have a little bit of everything on here. Although not many stylized textures, they have a lot of photoreal assets on here that you can really use to populate your scenes and save time. When you're creating a short film or an art piece, one of the most important things to keep in mind is consistent style to not break the illusion for the audience, and especially when you have a heavy style such as I do. So let's say, for example, you don't have time to model a statue, and the only assets you can find are photoreal scans or low-poly versions. Let's talk about how we can kind of modify those assets to fit into your style without taking as long as creating it from scratch. And the first things first, you really should create your own hero assets to establish the style of your piece. What are the hero assets? They're your object of interest, like this cat and this painting for the bed, for example. If you create the hero assets, focus of your composition, it will establish the overall style and help sell the illusion that everything is cohesive. Texturing is big. Texturing can save your assets. In this watermelon girl scene, I took these low poly assets available on Blender Market and I retextured them in Substance Painter to achieve the style I wanted. Even though they were lower poly than the bed and more square, they ended up fitting into the final scene because of the texturing matching. Retexturing an object is still a more time effective way than starting from scratch. And if you have Photoshop or GIMP, or Substance Painter or whatever free software you may be using, even if it's Blender, a lot of times you can modify these textures quickly to kind of match your style. Of course, there's modifying the model itself. You can modify models to fit your needs and this can include deleting or adding features. However, I find that adding a lattice modifier can do wonders. I found this great plugin called Fit Lattice on Blender Market and it automatically adds a lattice to fit the size of your object. From there, you can adjust the object to distort it and fit it to the proportions you'd like without having to do complex remodeling. 10 foot rule. Now this may seem like common sense, but I've seen beginners getting caught up in this all the time. Don't get caught up in all the tiny details. The mug in the background of your shot may not be exactly the mug you wanted, but follow the 10 foot rule. It may not look great at a thousand percent, but does it look good at a hundred percent? Because that's all that matters to the viewer. It's out of focus. When in doubt, push it out of focus. This is great for backgrounds. When you're focused in tight on characters, sometimes you can even get away with just pushing an image out of focus on the background. Otherwise, if you're modeling the entire scene, if it's out of focus, don't sweat it. Spend your time on the objects in focus. If you're curious where the term kit bashing comes from, it actually comes from way back when painting models became a popular hobby and people wanted to add a little bit of extra custom flair to their models. So what they started doing is taking pieces of models from other set and kind of bashing them together to create their own custom models so that they could be a bit more creative with their work. So us 3D nerds kind of stole that term and adopted it as our own and in a way we owe some of this creativity and time-saving techniques to model nerds. But model nerds are weird and 3D nerds are cool, especially Blender ones. 
And that is a great question, my average viewer. But okay, yeah, we're kind of weird too. As usual, thank you for watching and please tag me in any creations you make from these tutorials on your Instagram. I oftentimes love seeing what you make and I love sharing them to my story when I catch them. Thanks again for watching.